please stand for the posting of the colors. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed, and welcome to San Francisco City Hall. Today, we honor the life, the legacy of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Senator Feinstein, that is her official title. It's how Californians and people all over the world knew her. But to us, to San Franciscans, she was Mayor Diane Feinstein. I was 13 years old, the French horn player at Benjamin Franklin Middle School, when I first met the mayor. Over the years, we had become Mayor Feinstein's band. Whenever there was an important event or activity, she chose us to perform. We played at City Hall and at the Super Bowl celebrations, we proudly wore our band sweaters that she bought for us. 
And Mayor Feinstein always took the time to talk to us, to tell us how amazing we were, and to remind us that we were her band. I was born in the early 70s, so as a kid, Thank you, Mayor Feinstein, for bringing the Blue Angels to San Francisco in 1981. I was born in the early 70s, so as a kid, as far as I could remember, as far as I ever knew, Diane Feinstein was the mayor. And for kids my age, we just always accepted that a woman could be in charge, that a woman could do whatever a man could do. We believed that. We considered it normal. My mother's generation didn't have that. My grandmother's generation certainly didn't. But millions of girls my age and long after me have grown blissfully free of the yokes our grandmothers wore because Dianne Feinstein wrestled them off, because she showed the way. She created a world where girls like me could be tough, where we could lead. When I became mayor, and even before that, when I was a member of the Board of Supervisors, Senator Feinstein was always there to offer guidance. A few years ago, when I was president of the Board of Supervisors, we had a large ceremony in the board chambers. And Senator Feinstein, as former mayor, joined, uh, joined me up on the dais. As each dignitary or past supervisor walked in, she whispered notes to me, that's supervisor so-and-so. He lives in West Portal. Ask him about his gardening. <laughs> when the pandemic hit, Senator Feinstein reached out to me before I could reach out to her. She talked to me about the hard decisions that needed to be made. She told me to focus on doing the right thing, to do what's necessary for the city. Senator Feinstein was always focused on the nuts and bolts, the things that San Francisco needed. I valued her advice, and I will miss her, of course. It was her words that meant the most when I became the second woman to be mayor of this city in the wake of tragedy. It was her advice on how to heal and lead that gave me strength. But I don't know if she recognized that none of the things that she told me as an adult were ever as important as what she showed us as children. Through times of tragedy and triumph, Diane Feinstein showed us the meaning of San Francisco's motto, gold in peace, iron in war. She showed us a world where women lead, where we lift each other up so that girls like me could follow in her footsteps. She showed us strength and grace, courage and collaboration. And like the old saying goes, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Diane Feinstein did it right. She was our mayor, our champion. She was the leader of our band. And I know I speak for all San Franciscans when I say she will truly be missed. Now I'd like to introduce Rabbi Singer, and Cantor Barak. In our Jewish tradition, we call Senator Feinstein It's an American amen right there. We call her in Hebrew an Eshet Hayel, a woman of valor. And as we mourn this loving mother, grandmother, friend, true woman of valor, let us be comforted by the words that we have in common, the words of the 23rd Psalm. For the psalmist writes and reminds us how this senator this amazing leader lived. She brought comfort to so many in this city as we faced some of our deepest challenges. She feared no evil 
as she courageously pursued justice as a leader in the Senate. And she gave us hope that we Americans can always be inspired by the values of democracy, even as we walk at times through the valley of the shadows. So may we be comforted as we now hear the cantor sing those words in the Hebrew. And then I'll invite you to join me together by heart, perhaps, in the English. Join with me. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God maketh me to lie down in green pastures. God leadeth me beside the still waters. God restoreth my soul. God guides me in straight paths for thy name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of God forever. May her memory be for a blessing. Amen. Now we will hear remarks from the President of the United States, Joe R. Biden. Oh, and staff and a remarkable Diane Feinstein. Within Diane's very soul lay the defining trait of great leaders, character. Over 15 years in the Senate, plus another decade in the Vice Presidency, and now the Presidency, Again and again, I saw her character in action, up close and personal. She was always tough, prepared, rigorous, and compassionate. And she always served the people of California and our nation for the right reasons, to make life better for everyday people and ensure America stood for freedom, transparency, and justice at home and abroad. We had the honor of a front row seat to her character, the Judiciary Committee. In that role, among her many accomplishments throughout her distinguished career, she turned passion into purpose to lead the fight to ban assault weapons, to protect our civil liberties, to strengthen our national security, safeguard our environment, and so much more. Often the only woman in the room, she also mentored generations of women and men alike to imagine a bigger, more hopeful future for themselves, for the country, and for the world. On this day of remembrance, we reflect on the many ways that such a pioneer made history and built a legacy that will benefit Americans for generations to come, and that's not an exaggeration. At the same time, our family reflects on the life of a kind and loyal friend. To Catherine, we hope you find the strength and the truth found in Scripture. As is the mother, so is the daughter. And to the rest of Diane's family, we send our love and hope you find comfort in the knowledge that she and her are now together again. And to the nation today, may Diane's life be a reminder that the institutions of our democracy do not only depend on the Constitution that governs our nation, which she swore an oath to to uphold and defend. Our democracy depends on the Constitution of our character as a people, on the habits, the habits of our heart and our mind that lie deep within us. Thank God we have Diane showing us the way by the power of her example. God bless the great American hero. She was something else, and she was a dear friend. God bless Diane Feinstein. Now it is my honor to introduce the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala D. Harris. Thank you, Mayor Breed. To Catherine, Eileen, Rick, and the entire family, and to all the distinguished guests who are gathered, it is my honor to be here with you today. Diane Einstein was an icon of California. She was an American patriot, a giant of the Senate, and a dear friend to Doug and me. She was a little student of history, a gifted, and I will add, very generous artist, Many of us are collectors of Diane's work. <laughs> and a passionate leader. Simply put, she was a force. To many of you, she was supervisor, mayor, senator, and then chairman. She was recognized around the world as a leader, a standard bearer of America, and of American values. 
Yet, of course, to Catherine and Eileen, she held perhaps the most important titles of all, mother and grandmother. So to Catherine and Eileen and Rick and to the entire family, Doug and my prayers are with you. And I don't have to tell you. That it is not easy. It is not easy when a loved one lives a life of public service, especially a person as hardworking and selfless as Diane Feinstein. So to you, the family, we thank you for all the sacrifices you have knowingly and unknowingly made over the years that allowed her to serve. And on behalf of the people of the United States, we are grateful to you. As a public servant, Diane had the courage to take on the many tough fights, even when she was faced with fierce opposition and political peril, and especially when her work was in defense of the Constitution and the security of the American people. Diane commanded respect, and she gave respect. She was a serious and gracious person who welcomed debate and discussion, but always required that it would be well-informed and studied. And I believe that this city, where she started, had a lot to do with that. To the uninitiated here, I will let you in on a well-known secret. San Francisco politics is rough and tumble. <laughs> Some even say a bare-knuckled sport. And this city requires its elected officials to engage on a daily basis in complex discussions with informed constituents who will raise the most interesting of local issues. No matter if you are walking through the Presidio or attending an event at Delancey Street. And this environment, I do believe, guided Diane's style of leadership, even after she reached the heights of national and global power. Diane diligently focused on the impacts to real people. Ideology, substance, not relationship, results, not rhetoric. When I was sworn into the Senate in 2017, it was Diane who welcomed me. She invited me to her Senate hideaway. There, with one hand, she presented me with a glass of California Chardonnay, and with the other hand, mind are full of her draft bills. <laughs> and true to her mayoral roots, she was deeply immersed in the details of each bill and how each would play on the streets of our beloved state. Some of my fondest recent memories of Diane are of our time together in a skiff a secure meeting room in the United States Senate. Every week, members of the Senate Intelligence Committee would walk into that wood-paneled room, no cameras, no public, no devices. Senators of both parties who would take off their jackets and literally roll up their sleeves, putting aside partisanship to discuss what was in the best interest of our national security. There, we would review classified materials and receive updates from the heads of the CIA, our intelligence community, and the United States military. And God forbid if one of them gave an evasive answer. Diane, with her trademark grin, would pause, lift up her memo, 
glanced knowingly at the others of us on the dais and questioned the witness in a way this former prosecutor always admired. In that room, there was give and take, substantive debate and problem solving. And that was quintessential Diane at her best. So as I close, allow me to turn back the clock 30 years to Tuesday, November 3rd, 1992. I was a young prosecutor at the Alameda County District Attorney's Office. And on that evening, I left my home in Oakland, got in my Toyota Corolla, and drove across the Bay Bridge to the city. I pulled into the Fairmont Hotel, and I walked up to a huge and packed ballroom. There on stage stood Diane and Barbara Boxer, hands raised in what the nation would name the Year of the Woman. We celebrated an historic feat we were the first state to elect two female senators. And that night, we celebrated Diane, who the next day would take office as the first female senator ever for the great state of California. Fast forward to today, when I again travel to the city to celebrate Diane this time from Washington, D.C., on Air Force Two. Diane, the women of America have come a long way. Our country has come a long way. And you helped move the ball forward. And our nation salutes you, Diane. Please welcome the Senate Majority Leader of the United States Senate, the Honorable Charles E. Schumer. Thank you, Mayor and Vice President Harris, Speaker Emerita Pelosi, Mayor Breed, Rabbi Singer, Cantor Barak, Catherine and all of Diane's family, my many dear colleagues who have come here, and friends. Now, there's a story of Diane I always thought was quintessentially her. Some of us might remember that years ago, Senator Feinstein injured her ankle while on a morning walk in Lake Tahoe. Now, most people might go see a doctor, clear the schedule, focus on recovering. But Diane, forget it. It was the week of the Lake Tahoe Summit a signature event of hers, one she inaugurated back in 1997 with Harry Reid, convening leaders from California and Nevada, the public sector, the private sector, all for a cause near and dear to her heart, preserving Lake Tahoe for future generations. Years later, she looked back on that morning and remembered hearing a bone pop, but chose to finish her day before even thinking about treatment. Turns out it was a pretty significant fracture. Asked how she got through the day, she only offered three words. I just did. <laughs> now, there are many adjectives that rightly describe Diane Feinstein. Strong, unflappable, winning, fierce, practical, earnest. But one quality above all stands out in my mind and will forever set Diane apart. Integrity. Integrity. Diane Feinstein was a leader of uncommon integrity. She had an internal gyroscope that propelled her, motivated her, never let her stray from a cause she knew was right. I have to be unflappable right now. 
She, when she embraced an issue, she pursued it until the end. No matter the consequences, no matter what others thought, her integrity made her sparkle like a diamond in the Senate. I was dazzled by that internal gyroscope for the first time in 1994 when I closely worked with Diane as the author of the House version of the assault weapons ban, which Diane championed in the Senate. She worked that bill harder than anyone I'd seen work a bill, attacking every angle, thinking of every pitfall, resisting every broadside from the NRA because she knew her cause to be just from her own experience. Thanks to her dedication, her unflappability, her trademark integrity, America turned a new leaf in the fight for gun safety. Working with Diane on the assault weapons ban was one of the proudest moments of my time in office. From that time on, I not only called Diane a colleague, but a close friend. And what a loving, caring friend she was. When my daughter first moved to San Francisco out of college that September, I got a call from Diane. She asked me, does your daughter have anywhere to go for the High Holy Day services? I said, no. They said, well, then she's going to services with me. There are so many qualities of this amazing, amazingly multifaceted women, woman that I will miss. I will miss her ability to win over doubters and detractors and there were many, not by putting them down, but with her elegance, her poise, and her piercing wit. I will miss her sheer dedication and thoroughness. She was better prepared and better informed than just about anyone else. I can't tell you how many times Diane would consider a topic and say, let me go home and read first. And she'd always come back with 40 or 50 or 60 questions. The next day, I will miss Diane's talent as one of the Senate's great deal makers. If there was the smallest bit of common ground, she'd pursue it if it meant moving an issue forward. Even while being so far ahead of her time on gun safety, marriage equality, women's rights, the environment, and so many other issues, she was never afraid of working with those she disagreed with whenever the opportunity arose. Dianne Feinstein was the living embodiment of what the Senate should always be, an institution built on cooperation. Finally, I'll always be indebted to Diane, not just, not just as a colleague, but as a father of two daughters. Because of Diane, my daughters grew up in a world that's a little bit fairer, a little more just, and more accepting of women in leadership. Speaking at Stanford from commencement in 1993, Diane confessed that she never sought to be the first woman in this role or that role. What mattered most, she says, she said, was to live life to the fullest and advise the graduates to, quote, be able to accept challenge, take some risk, but always protect your integrity. And that is just what she did throughout her entire so today we grieve, today we mourn an immense loss for the Senate, for California, for America. But we also give thanks, thanks that, thanks that someone so rarefied, so dedicated, and with a sparkling diamond-like presence served our country so well for so many wonderful years. And now I would like to read a statement from former Congressman and Chair of the California Democratic Party, John Burton. Our country, California, and my hometown of San Francisco has lost a great public servant. But more important to me is that I lost a friend of more than 50 years. She was a force to be reckoned with when it really mattered most, and she showed up for you when the chips were down. She saved San Francisco during its darkest hours and showed political courage during times when no one else did. 
as a United States Senator. She had chutzpah, and I loved her for it. My heart goes out to her family, and especially her daughter, Catherine, and her, her granddaughter, Eileen. Rest in power, my friend, from John Burton, as I said, former congressman and former chairman of the Democratic Party in California. Now please join me in welcoming the San Francisco Girls Chorus. Now, please join me in welcoming Speaker Emerita, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Good afternoon, everyone. Diane. Diane, all your life you have challenged everyone to do our best. Now, we, as we honor your leadership, to celebrate your life and express our sorrow in your passing. Living up to your standard is quite a challenge. However, we started with the President of the United States uh, having his plane carry you home. He loved you so much, he said, my only wish is that I could have been on the plane taking her home. Draped in the American flag, your beautiful landing in the arms of the first responders, lifting you up, Catherine, Rick, and Eileen on Saturday. Over the weekend, your beloved 49ers and our great San Francisco Giants paid tribute to you at their games. Yesterday, Mayor Breed received you triumphantly back at City Hall, where you would lie in state and we'd be welcomed home by the people of San Francisco with music and song. 
thousands of people came to pay their respects and lined the blocks all day long and into the night so that the family had to extend the time for people to pay their respects. And this week, it was announced that the Blue Angels, <laughs> the Fleet Week would be dedicated to you. Fleet Week would be down to, and, the, and now listen to this. The Blue Angels will be pilot a missing woman formation honoring Diane Feinstein. She flew with them, Can you imagine? Choirs singing, people crying, teams cheering, ships sailing, Blue Angels flying, all honoring Diane, a woman so strategic and so strong, a lady so gentle, a trailblazing model, and a mentor of generosity and sweetness. Here they come again. While they're coming, let's recognize the members of Congress who are here, the House and the Senate. Please stand so that we can recognize you all. So many. <laughs> Thank you. You know, from the most vulnerable in our midst to the most powerful persons in the world, Diane re regarded everyone with respect. Thank you, Kathleen, Ka excuse me. Thank you, Catherine, Rick, and Eileen for sharing Diane with us. We all smile when thinking of Diane going to her first civic engagement with Catherine in a stroller. And then, years later, You're, it's what Diane wants, that's what we get. <laughs> and years later, with Eileen, whom Diane called Noodle, in her arms. Catherine in the strodel, Noodle in her arms. Blue angels in the sky. Diane drew strength from you, Catherine, Noodle, and Rick. And we all drew strength from her. I hope it is a comfort to you that so many people mourn your loss and are praying for you at this sad time. Diane, um, they asked me to talk personally about Diane. We being neighbors as well as political, uh, shall we say, um, in the same arena. Diane loved cultivating people and flowers. She cultivated relationships, bringing people together officially, personally, and romantically. You know that Diane was a matchmaker. Now, some of you know that. You are here, Jerry Brown and Anne, uh, Charlotte Chilton, and George. You know, the list goes on and on. Last week, my daughter Nancy, Nancy was toasting Diane, and she said, thank you, Diane, for allowing us to be present in your happy place. Diane considered it a happy place where she challenged us all. This was at the beginning of last week. Little did we know what the week would hold. Diane cultivated people. She was loyal to hundreds of commissioners, appointees, and staff, many of whom are here today. Let's hear it from you, all of you. I have a T-shirt that I want to show you, and it says, and many of you have worn this, I survived Diane's staff meetings. <laughs> and Diane cultivated flowers. She loved flowers, to grow them, to show them, to paint them and share them on drawings and on mugs. Anybody here have a mug, a Diane mug? And neighbor, as neighbors, Paul and I always knew, because we could see from our window, that Diane had the most fabulous hydrangeas. As neighbors and friends, Diane and I took pride in working together for California and for our values. I'll always remember this one time in 2015 in the United States Capitol, Diane and I expressed our concern to President Xi about the Chinese government's abuses of the Tibetans and disrespect for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. When Diane spoke, people listened. People have asked me, what is the best advice I ever received from Diane? Well, there's money, we all have gotten great advice from Diane, but the most constant advice I ever got from her, again and again, 
was, Nancy, you don't always have to be the one going out on the attack. Let some other people do that from time to time. Why don't you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Madam Vice President, thank you so much for honoring us with your presence today and honoring Diane, your good friend, and again, official associate. It's an honor that you are here. Leader Schumer, you have spoken so beautifully about Diane, our Senator's accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful remarks the morning of her passing and all that you have done since then to honor her memory. And she has a lasting legacy. From the cable cars, the breast cancer stamp, to the assault weapons ban, to Team Tahoe, any Team Tahoe's here? Team Tahoe, the list goes on and on from the U.S. Capitol back to San Francisco where Dianne Feinstein is our forever mayor, forever mayor. Dianne was such a commanding mayor for 10 powerful years that when her term was up and some other people started to run for mayor, including some men, school children were saying, can a man be mayor of San Francisco? <laughs> I guess. Diane left. <laughs> Madam Mayor. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Diane left us as she had lived. She left on her own terms. She was proud to confirm more than 140 Biden judges. And, she, and, and Chuck can attest that she walked onto that floor last Thursday, which would be her last day, and so she walked onto the floor and voted to advance legislation to keep government open for the people. <laughs> this is just the beginning, all weekend, she, it's, Fleet Week dedicated to Diane, flyovers all weekend. She would like it like that. The President began his beautiful tribute earlier in the program with a poem by Emerson. I will end with a song suggested by Nancy Corinne, my daughter who loved Diane so much, American Anthem. Doesn't this sound like Diane? Let them say of me, I believed in sharing the blessings I received. Let me know in my heart when my days are through, America, America, I did my best for you. Diane Feinstein. <laughs> Diane, we know you did your best for America. May you rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, I told the Blue Angels just two times, but now they're just giving us some more energy. We're excited and grateful for the Senator's legacy, and we know that they loved her as well. So at this time, I'd like to welcome, for the final remarks of the day, Senator Dianne Feinstein's granddaughter, Eileen Mariano. Thank you, Mayor Breed, and thank you to everyone in the audience for making the journey out here today and for braving the heat. It is an honor to my grandmother. My grandmother will be remembered by those in San Francisco, California, and the United States for so many reasons, a number of which have already been mentioned today. For San Franciscans, Senator Feinstein guided the city through tragedy, saved our beloved cable cars, created the iconic Pier 39, and fought for the LGBTQ community during the height of the HIV AIDS epidemic. For Californians, Senator Feinstein established Joshua Tree in Death Valley preserved beautiful Lake Tahoe, 
modernized California's water system and protected California's deserts. For those across the country, Senator Feinstein will be remembered for banning assault weapons, creating life-saving Amber Alerts, and rooting out and banning torture. She will also be remembered across the country for shattering the glass ceiling. She showed young women everywhere that they too can be leaders, that they can make an impact, and that they deserve a seat at the table. But to me, she will be remembered as the most incredible grandmother. Minutes after I was born at the hospital, she exclaimed to my mom and dad, oh wow, she looks just like me. You should change her name to Diane. From then on, she and I were extremely close. We had an effortless connection. When I was a toddler, we could amuse ourselves for hours playing hide and seek. I would laugh and laugh and laugh when she would find me hiding. I would spend nights at my grandmother's house whenever she was home in San Francisco. She taught me to play chess, although she hated losing. We would pick flowers from her garden and draw them together, although only her drawings were worth making into prints. She would give me haircuts at home in the kitchen, much to my parents' dismay because my hair always turned out crooked. And she loved teaching me about San Francisco's history, why there are bricks instead of asphalt on some of our city's steepest hills, what Sutro baths used to look like before the fire, and the best places in the city to view the bay. At the end of the day, we would curl up close on the couch and watch a movie or our favorite TV show. And when it was time to go to sleep, she would say goodnight, and she would always sing me the song, You Are My Sunshine. My grandmother was my biggest cheerleader. She was an unwavering support system. She never failed to tell me how proud she was of me. I could bring to her any worry or fear, and she always had a good solution. She was a constant and unyielding source of love. As I got older, she started sharing more of her infinite wisdom. She taught me lessons that I will carry with me forever. Work to your long suit, she would say. Do something that you can do for your entire life, something that energizes you, something that inspires you, and something that makes the world a better place for the people who live in it. Boy, did my grandmother do that. Earn your spurs, she said. You have to work hard, put in the hours, and work your way up. My grandmother did that too. It doesn't matter how many times you lose. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you keep going, no matter what. That, and she would also say to me, if you ever go out of town, no matter where you're going, it doesn't matter if you're going to a city, or the desert, or a beach, or the mountains, always pack a black pantsuit. <laughs> there is no occasion to which you can't wear a black pantsuit. So to my grandmother, I promise to always work to my long suit, to earn my spurs, to keep going no matter what, and to never forget my black pantsuit. Your family loves you. We are so proud of you. We miss you. And you will always, always be my sunshine. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you to your entire family, to so many of Senator Feinstein's staff and colleagues from the Senate, people who have come far and wide 
Thank you to all of San Francisco for your love and your support of Senator Feinstein and her family at this time. Her legacy will continue to live on in everything we do to continue to lead this city and to lead this country. This has been an extraordinary service and we appreciate especially our vice president for being here to represent our country, to demonstrate the importance of what Senator Feinstein means, not just to San Francisco and the state of California, but the entire country. It is so meaningful to be here with each and every one of you, so many elected leaders and legends and people who helped lead this city for many, many generations. You are all in our hearts and our prayers as we continue to mourn Senator Feinstein, but she will always, always be remembered in so many corners of this city, in so many corners of the state, and in corners of this country. And at this time, we'd like to welcome back the girls' chorus for a final song in honor of our great Senator, Diane Feinstein. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you being here on behalf 
of Senator Dianne Feinstein's family. We want to thank you all for joining us here today.